might be. That's a fundamental LDS concept. And, and Bruce R. McConkie in the 1960s and 70s and even up into the 80s up to his death, he was one of the big expounders of this fundamental pillar of LDS theology, the fall of Adam. With the fall of Adam, mortality began. And with mortality, of course, is severe limitation. Yes. Like I say, we, we can't do a whole lot. We don't accomplish a whole lot. And uh, what we do accomplish never seems to come with us when we die. I've never seen any billionaires whose money has helped them live forever. I mean, Howard Hughes is dead and gone. And he certainly did not take his money with him. His money had nothing to do with how long he lived. You see the point? My whole reason in bringing this up is because the fundamental gulf between God and man was that not the point of Christ's atonement to bridge that gulf? Irenaeus, one of the excellent early church fathers in the Christian church, in the early Christian church, and I have a, I have a very fine text edited by Stefan Finlan and Vladimir Karlamov called Theosis Deification in Christian Theology. This is a very excellent collection of Christian papers on this idea of theosis. It's Pickwick Publications, 2006, brand new. It's not old at all. Jeffrey Finch, on his article, Irenaeus on the Christological Basis of Human Divinization, very, very interesting what he says. He notes basically Irenaeus' acclamation of our Lord Jesus Christ who did through his transcendent love become what we are that he might bring us to be even what he is himself. This was Irenaeus' Christological understanding. Now the question is then what is our ultimate destination? And what is Christ? Is our limitation to be eternal, or is it just right now while we live under the effects of the fall of Adam? That's the real question. I don't think Johnny understands the power of the infinite atonement as the Book of Mormon so poignantly puts it. I mean, think about that. A translation in 1829, 1830... The infinite atonement. Wow, that's really something. The infinite atonement. The Christians claim God is infinite. Well, the Book of Mormon says so is his atonement. It also is infinite. That is, it stretches and covers everything. There is no exception to this. Pure power. Now, the scriptures in the New Testament declare quite emphatically, actually, that Christ will inherit all that the Father has. Well, what does the Father have? He has life in himself. He has full power. He has transcendent love. He has the ability to accomplish his purposes. He has all of this, the Father. He has given all of this to the Son through the inheritance because of the atonement. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Yes, that's what the scripture says. In fact, is not Christ called the Logos in John 1 and 1? Ain Archa, Ain Hologos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Logos was God. The Logos is Christ, but it says the Logos was God. I believe it's either Ephesians or Philippians. I can't remember which right now, and I don't have my scriptures with me at this particular moment that says Christ created all things. Through him all things came into existence. That is through Christ. He has full power. That is what we will be joint heirs with Christ in receiving, is it not? The whole point is Christ's infinite, unlimited atonement bridges the gap to our limitation. When a Christian comes along and says, I am saved by grace, what are we saved from? It's a true enough doctrine. 
What are we saved from? We are saved from what? Death and hell. What are these but limitations? Death is a limitation to the length of life. Yes? Hell is the limitation to our having pure joy. Yes? Did not Christ come to do away with these? They are described in the scriptures as his ultimate enemies. And he has the power to overcome his ultimate enemies. Everything, including death. We are going to be joint heirs with what Christ has. What does Christ have? He has eternal life. He was given the resurrection of the flesh. Norman Geisler has a very powerful article that I will present a podcast on, on the actual physicality, the eternal physicality of Christ's resurrection body. The same body he was on earth in is his forever because of the resurrection. Norman Geisler teaches that doctrine. There's your God with a body. If Christ has all power in heaven and earth. Now, let's think about this for a minute. Christ, We are told Christ has all power in heaven and in earth. Yes? What does that mean? Do you realize we have all the power in just the earth right now? We have developed enough nuclear power right now, nuclear weapons, to destroy this planet 200 times over. Now, now think about this. Next time you're out on the ocean, or next time you're up on top of a mountain looking over the vast horizon and panorama of the earth, Christ has been given all power. We're not told this is just spiritual. We believe the scripture says all power. Physical, spiritual, intellectual, mental, in all aspects. This is astonishing in heaven and earth. In other words, this is the scripture's way of saying Christ is God. If we are to be joint heirs with Christ as we accept his atonement, is that not being what Christ is? This the early church father Irenaeus clearly taught. Now I agree. Irenaeus also taught that mankind is limited, but of course But his Christological doctrine is that through the unlimited power of Christ, we can overcome our limitations. This is the point of Christ's mission. Without that, we really are doomed to fall to the dust and rise no more, as the Book of Mormon so 